Today's video is all about food webs, and I know that you probably have a background or some understanding about food webs, but today we're going to take it to another level, make sure that we're all on the same page, and we're going to understand three things. And those are the three levels of food webs, and they do actually build on each other, and they have elements of food chains within them. Level one is all about following the energy. Where is the energy actually going in a food web, and how can we show that using a food web? Level two is all about identifying the types of eaters and consumers that we have in a food web compared to those that produce their own food. And level three is about actually looking at those different types of consumers and producers and classifying them and figuring out where is the top of our food chain and what is that called and how do the other groups fit in because a food web can get really really messy and really crazy but it is an awesome way to show the flow of energy in an ecosystem so let's dive in and check it out there are three levels to building a food web and we're going to start by talking about level one which is all about understanding some basic relationships we're going to build this food web based on a chimpanzee and from basic research and video watching, we can understand that one of the food sources for the chimpanzee is the termite. But when we're understanding basic relationships, it can build up very quickly. And so we need to understand where the termite gets its energy and is this the only source of food for our chimpanzee? And so let's try to build off of these two to see where the energy flows because a food web is all about looking at the flow of energy in an ecosystem. When we're building our food webs, we need to keep in mind the phrase, follow the energy. Where does our termite get energy from? Well, our termite gets energy from bark from a tree, um, and where does our bark get energy from? Well, since it's part of a plant, it gets energy from the sun. And so when we draw our arrows in a food web, we actually draw the arrow going to the thing that gets the energy. So if I were to start my food web out here, I would draw an arrow going from the sun to the bark, from the bark to the termite, and from the termite to the chimpanzee but I would actually get to add in one more arrow here because our chimpanzees also eat bark. So let's do a recap and move forward. If level one is all about the energy flow and looking at which way the arrow is going, the arrow going from, to the thing that gets the energy and receives that, and those different types of relationships of predator prey um, as an energy source, in level two, we are going to move forward and really think about that energy that they're receiving by categorizing them as eaters. Okay, We need to think about the arrow as um, something going into the mouth of something else uh, as we draw those arrows out. Now, there are different types of eaters. Three of them I know that you are incredibly familiar with and have used a lot. Herbivore, omnivore, and carnivore. Herbivores eating plants, and we're going to use an H to represent that omnivores eating both plants and meat, and our carnivores being a meat only. And with those, we are going to think about them as H's, O's, and C's when we start to categorize them on our food web. Now the other thing that we need to add in here is one more different type of eater, but it might be a different way that you wouldn't think of. This type is a producer, and a producer is going to be represented by a P, and that is going to actually be plants themselves. Anything that receives energy from the sun is going to be labeled with a P because they produce their own energy. So let's take a look at how this will look in an actual food web. Let's start off first by classifying our eaters. Let's look for our producers first. So they're the ones that are going to get energy from the sun. So if I were to draw an arrow to all of the plants because they are getting energy from the sun, 
those are going to be our producers. So I'm going to write a P by all of them, our bark, our bananas, and our plant roots. Next, we need to move on and think about what is eating those plants. Those are going to be our herbivores. And we need to think about that in terms of them only eating the plants. And so our termite is going to be considered a herbivore because it is going to get energy from the bark. And it is also going to get energy from plants as well. Our fire ant is down here at the bottom is also going to be labeled a herbivore because it also gets energy from bark and plants. Now we got one more guy down here on the bottom and this is a pig and it's actually called a bush pig. And pigs are herbivores. They only eat plants. And so we are going to draw a lot arrows going to because they're getting energy from these sources. They are going to eat different types of fruits, plants, and bark. As we move forward here, who haven't we labeled? Have we got all of the things that only eat plants? We have. Because doing a little bit of research about our chimpanzee, who is our main guy in our food web, our chimpanzee is going to get energy from plants. Okay, it's going to get energy from bananas, from plant roots, and from bark. It also, though, eats our herbivores. Okay, it's going to eat the termites, and it's going to eat the fire ants. Our food web's starting to get a little messy here, and we're getting a lot of arrows going into our main uh, subject of our food web. But doing some more research, our um, chimpanzee also is going to be eating a bush pig in different occasions. And so since it does that, we are going to label it with an O for omnivore because it eats both plants and animals. Now our chimpanzee is not going to be eating our leopard here that's right underneath him because our leopard is actually a uh, feed upon chimps. So we're going to draw an arrow to that. Our leopard is also going to feed upon the bush pig as well. And our leopard, as you know many cats are, are carnivores. So I'm going to label it with a C. The last thing here on this page to talk about is what in the heck is this big, goofy, uh, circle-y, yellow-y, gross looking thing at the bottom? Well this is actually a picture of bacteria. And it is on here for a very specific reason. It needs to be a component in every food web. And what its purpose is, it actually works to break down things once they die. And so they are going to, anything that is living, that dies, is going to give energy to the bacteria. And our bacteria is known as decomposers. And that is how we label it, as decomposers or you can put a D. And so anything that is living that can die that will be broken down by bacteria is going to give energy to our decomposer. So I'm drawing lines from the leopard, from the chimp, from the plant roots because all of these things can die, from the bush pig, the fire ant, the bark because trees can die as well, and the termite. Now it's starting to look like a crazy mess, but if you just simply follow the arrows, you can see the flow of energy. So we have successfully completed both level one by showing all of the arrows and the flow of energy. By looking here, you just need to follow the arrows and you can see how the energy flows in this ecosystem. We have also completed level two by looking at the different types of eaters that they are. In level three, we're going to go a little bit further and look at this exact same food web, but classify it by a more in-depth way. Hey guys, to keep my promise to you to keep all of the videos and your homework for science to 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to stop the video right now because the next section about level three food webs is actually going to push us over 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little chunk we're going to watch that part all together as a class, um, in class, and we will review and answer any questions from there. So, let's go ahead and wrap up food webs by wrapping up our notes and by taking the learning survey that's below.